Thank you for joining us today as we talk about a career in project management. I'm joined today with our instructor at Corporate College, Joe Anastasi. Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm always excited to um, discuss these topics with individuals. Uh, I learn a lot more and I know our students benefit from these discussions. So could you tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your career as you entered the project management field? Sure. So coming out of college, I uh, was a computer science major and started my career as a programmer and I uh, enjoyed that a lot and um, have been involved with IT ever since the, those days. About the mid 90s, I got a real um, strong interest in project management. I had worked for a company whose primary mission was managing projects really well. That was at the forefront. They were a technology consulting company, but project management was first. So I caught the bug then. Having that interest and being a, a good programmer or a decent programmer, I said, you know, I'd like to learn how to um, uh, lead projects. So I approached my uh, project manager at the time and said, hey, is there anything I could do to help you? I want to learn, you know, I didn't want to use the word apprentice or uh, mm -hmm. anything like that, but is there anything that you can give me to do that will help me build some skills and some confidence in this area and we could still keep moving the project along? And I said, I can, uh, I'll still commit to doing the normal work I would have done anyway. So he's, he was a great mentor. Um, he gave me the opportunity to do some of those things in, par in partnership with him. Um, I led meetings. I captured tasks. I worked on getting estimates and all those kind of things um, without the title. And a lot of times, uh, many of us out there are leading projects, but don't have the title or formal authority. And that's tough. Um, but it was I was so appreciative of, of getting that opportunity. And that just developed into um, more roles for me as a manager, as a, as a leader. Um, I'm currently um, uh, an IT manager and been involved with project management for, you know, close to, it's about 25 years now, 26 years. So it's been, it's been a good journey. Oh, wow. So there's a couple of things I heard in that, that I think we all can learn from, um, you know, your eagerness to learn and being able to like, you know, put yourself out there and ask your manager, like, Hey, I would really want to be involved in this. You know, you're still doing your other duties. That definitely, I think, anyone can identify with as something that maybe takes a little bit of courage, but at the same time, you're growing yourself and growing you in your professional field, right? Right. That's so great. Exactly. Um, the other thing is, you know, you start out in IT. Are project managers only in the IT field or are there lots of fields for them? No, I, we have project managers. There have been project managers for centuries, right? So uh, whether they've been called that is a different story, but our, mm -hmm. our friends in construction and engineering and manufacturing and pharmaceuticals. I mean, every industry has project managers. Projects range from physical construction of things to more virtual products and software. Uh, so um, anybody that's aspiring to be a project manager, that itself is a unique skill and a special skill, but also um, having a strong sense of the domain that they're coming from, finance or marketing or whatever, is also important too. Uh, which helps with the credibility. It's not to say that somebody who's a good project manager can't lead something out of their industry, and it's not to say that somebody in an industry can't be a project manager somewhere else, but I think getting um, a good grasp of both makes you a stronger leader uh, in leading projects. Yeah, and that's so great to hear that it's not just one you know sector of the economy, right? There's all these different places and career paths that can lead to project management. So when you think about like a project manager or project management as that career field, um, whether you're bearing the title or not, what does that look like? Like what is project management? And, you know, how does someone think about a career in it? So I'll start with the basic definition that's out of the textbook. A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product service or result. <laughs> very textbook. So, very textbook. <laughs> Two key words in that definition of a project, temporary and unique. The temporary part is it's not forever. Your project should start and it should end. Mm. The unique part is you have uniqueness in the deliverables that are being created, the stakeholders, the people you're working with, the domain, any legal um, uh, requirements, all those things can factor into the uniqueness. And the project management part of it is the deliver 
is the leadership skills needed to deliver that project successfully, not just the traditional cost and schedule and, and scope where everyone normally gravitates to. Those are the easy ones. Well, they're not always easy, but they're easier to remember. It's also the customer satisfaction, business value. So as a leader, are you leading the team towards those business outcomes, um, those valuable outcomes? And um, do we feel like we've built the solution or the product or the result in a way that is sustainable, operatable, and uh, can be used and leveraged and not just you know thrown away when you're done? You want it to be a living thing um, and something you're proud of. So, um, so the project as a definition, project management is basically leading a team uh, through the con planning and construction, working with stakeholders and sponsors and making sure they're engaged, communicated to, and they're happy to a degree, right? Can not make everybody happy, but right. as happy as possible. <laughs> awesome. Are there any like specific skills that you find useful in people that lead projects? I mean, I think right away you said communication, that, that one makes sense of communicating to different teams as well as stakeholders. Um, anything else that you, you, you would say, you know, people with good, a certain personality trait or a tendency to that would lend well to project management? Yeah, I, so project management is both art and science. So the science part of it is the math. Like you need to understand numbers and budgets and mm -hmm. hours and estimates and forecasting schedules and calendar calculations. Um, you need to understand your policies of the organization, how you procure uh, equipment or material or external labor. You need all those skills. Like, so those are the procedural, the process, the budgets, the math, you know, those are skills. Maybe they're the more hard skills, if you will. And then you need soft skills. So the art of project management is understanding people, having empathy, um, just knowing when to use servant leadership where you're there to help the team be successful and also decisive leadership. So if the team can't make a decision and a decision needs to be made, you can artfully do it, get consensus, make a decision and move on. The worst thing that can happen is a project manager that isn't decisive mm -hmm. or doesn't consult their team to get the right answer. So it doesn't mean they have to make all the decisions. That's not a good answer. We want empowered teams, but getting the right answer out of the team, working together, making sure everyone's happy and content and positively leaning forward to build a deliverable. So it's art and science. Some people are really good at one and not so good at the other. And it shows it's not easy to develop both skills at the same time. Some people like grow up just learning the science and then they learn the art over time. Or some people are really good at the communication and the relationship building, but can't work at an Excel spreadsheet. So knowing a good project manager knows where their gaps are and then goes and gets the training like through Tracy, uh, they go get the training or experience needed to hone those skills, whether they're hard or soft skills. But that does give someone, you know, a better perspective of what's needed as you enter, you know, the challenges of, of project management on a day to day. So, you know, if someone's looking for a career in this or thinking about it, they've heard the term project manager, maybe this definition that you just gave helped them out a little and kind of understand define, defining it. What advice would you give someone thinking about entering that field? I would definitely say go for it the opportunities are not necessarily going to fall in your lap. Sometimes you have to go looking for it. Do not take on a super large, huge project without the skill set, without the mentor and approach. Look for small things to do in a safe, low risk environment. That would be my advice for like a first project. Um, have a mentor or two or three people you can go to for advice. Kind of keep track of what you learned and what mistakes mistakes you made, you're going to make mistakes, it's okay, but ask. Don't wait to be asked, ask. Look for something in the group. It could be like, hey, we just want to build a simple process. Can we run a small project to build that process? And just as a leader, can I get people in a room and talk about it, document meeting minutes? That's not like high-end project management, but it is the start. Like, how do I get people together towards a common mission and deliver something, right? So you start building those skills and then you can take on the next big one, a little bit bigger one, a little bit bigger one, a little bit bigger one. 
I mean, we all have home projects too. You've got remodeling you may be doing at home or you're going to re-landscape the yard or. How did you know? I have all of those things going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, all those things happen. And there's also charities out there or like um, the, the churches, the synagogues, the nonprofit organizations, they all need some project leadership and they may be good low, the schools. So if you have kids in uh, K through 12 or whatever, and there's programs that they're running or whatever. There's great ways to do project management without necessarily being the name project manager, but you're applying those same skills, the math, the, the science, the scheduling, the people, um, the, the communications, but doing it in a way that is low risk. You don't want to take on something huge as your first one because you're, you're going to fail and you don't want to, it's okay to fail, but you don't want to fail big right away as an individual. Companies can fail big, individuals fail smart. Like, yeah, look, I'm going to do this. It's low risk. I want to do this. And then I want to do another one. And then I want to do another one and just keep asking. Sound advice, Joe. That is such good advice as far as the, the risk when you're ste stepping out there, you know, taking your first steps and having, you know, those smaller projects so you can really feel out your skill set as well. So you are a member of the local chapter of the Project Management Institute. And that's something that I refer students to all the time, especially when they have um, questions or are looking for resources. Could you talk a little bit about PMI, the Project Management Institute, and who they are and what your role is with the organization? Yes, I'd be happy to. So um, from a, a larger perspective, PMI is the Project Management Institute. It's the world's largest organization whose sole purpose is to promote project management as a career and a profession. So they have PMIs in 130 countries oh, worldwide, wow. uh, million members, all different industries, walks of life. What PMI does is promotes education. Uh, they have a set of documented standards for leading projects. They have certifications that offer people so they can get credentialed on a certain type of leadership, whether it's project management, agile, um, they have all those things available to us. And one of the smart things that PMI did early on was recognize that you could be a global organization and you could do a lot of stuff off your website and through books, but there is no personal touch. It's very little personal touch with a global organization, right? Much like any other professional association, there's local chapters. So the local chapter, what we do is we just get people together. It's all about networking providing local content. So we have local speakers that come and present on a topic. Sometimes we get a, a regional speaker to come in and talk um, either in a professional development day or international project management day and things like that. But we, we also have a lot of local speakers that come and do presentations on something they've built or delivered in their organization that really hits home for a lot of us here. I mean, geez, when the Brown Stadium was first built, we got a we were one of the first people to walk through with hard hats to see. I mean, it's a long time ago, um, but we got to walk through that. We've been to the water plants. We've had uh, tours of NASA and, and really cool local things. There's a lot of great things that we're doing here. And uh, we want to spotlight that from a project management perspective. We want to spotlight local people. The other really great reason to join the chapter is just to meet other people. You never know when you need a connection, right? And networking is awesome. We have social events in a restaurant, bar, bowling alley, that kind of thing. So <laughs> that was kind of different and neat. So we are, as a chapter, trying new things just to get people to stay connected. So, so what you're saying is you're more fun than just a bunch of people talking about work, right? Yes. <laughs> it, it's yes. work-related, but at the same time, you guys do know how to socialize as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good to blend the two because we're not all one-dimensional. So, um, and people get to know each other. They make connections. They become friends. I mean, it's really uh, great. I've met so many people in 21 years involved with the chapter. It's, it's, it's wonderful. That's awesome. Well, um, I think the last thing I really want to ask you about is credentials. You mentioned the Project Management Institute or PMI um, and how they, you know, they are a body that does issue these credentials. They're, I know that there's testing involved in that. Could you just give like a general overview of what credentials are offered and describe just a little bit of what those credentials are for? Yeah, there's um, off, off, uh, off a list, um, there's nine-ish uh, credentials, and uh, PMI is also looking at having um, even minor credentials or sub-credentials, or micro, uh, they're, they're calling them micro-credentials, but they're big ones that they've had for a while, 
um, the big the biggest one for the organization is the project management professional. That's where you have when you do the application process, you have to show that you have project management experience and education, and then you take the test in your PMP. There's another one that's related. It's called the certified associate in project management. The associate one is intended to be temporary. You only get it for five years once you pass the test. It's really focused on the education component, not the experiential component. So somebody that has not led projects before, that's okay. If you get the project management education and you learn the project management body of knowledge and learn the terminology, you can get your CAPM, you get to keep it for five years. The intention though is not necessarily to keep the CAPM forever. It's really to say, hey, I have the education, let me show you. And then maybe that's something coupled with a work assignment or two could help you eventually get into a PMP kind of situation with the project management professional. Doesn't have to go that way, but that is um, um, a path. Oh, uh, we have program management, portfolio management, scheduling management. We have a business analysis uh, certification, uh, risk management. Uh, and um, we have two Agile certifications. There's one called the ACP, the Agile Certified Practitioner. So it's not necessarily for Agile leaders, it's for an Agile practitioner. So you could be any role on an Agile project, but you gotta learn the basics of things like Scrum, Extreme Programming, DSDM, and all those uh, Agile methods, um, and all the principles of Agile. That's a so great is, certification too. Is yes. Agile a methodology then? Mm. Uh, it depends on which textbook you read. So okay. in my brain, the way I look at it is lean is like the big guy. So thinking of lean, like not lean food, <laughs> lean as a, as, a, as a way of um, thinking about the work and visualizing work and, and making things flow better and being more efficient mm -hmm. and effective. And then within lean, I see agile as a subset. Okay. Um, so agile applies a lot of the lean principles. And on top of it is how do we do project work um, in a more effective way, more visually um, visible way. Then you got things like Kanban, Scrum, XP. I don't have the picture in front of me, but um, uh, that's the way I kind of think of it. Like Agile is a subset of Lean, and then all these other things are kind of subsets of Agile, or or Kanban is kind of a peer with um, Kanban is a way to do visual management of your like having a whiteboard with all your work on it. Um, uh, so, so that's what Agile means to me. It's just like delivering things iteratively or incrementally, um, showing progress more frequently, having your customer right next to you, giving you advice or guiding the direction of the team and developing the solution. It's not as much about budget or cost. It's more about solving a problem and evolving the solution. Uh, that's what Agile means to me. Wow, this is really helpful because I think, um, you know, when people think of project management, they might think of like one career path or one certification, but there's really a lot of places to go with it, as well as, you know, you know, getting these additional certifications, depending on the type of projects that their people are managing, uh, you know, like you mentioned within the realm of agile, even or agile, um, there's so many different additional certifications to get like a deeper understanding and really at the end of the day, help you lead projects better, right? Right, exactly. Awesome. Well, this has been so helpful, Joe. I really want to thank you for, um, you know, meeting with me today so that we could, you know, discuss this career opportunity in project management. Oh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to share um, this time with you and uh, share some thoughts on project management. So thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, um, those tuning in, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we've had a great discussion here with Joe Anastasi about a career in project management. If you're interested in learning more, there'll be a, a link in the text above. Please feel free to visit our website. And as always, have a great day. Stay safe.